All right, so I'm going to show you how to create some characters the way I've been creating them for LinkedIn. Um, a couple of things. I'm not an AI expert. I'm not a mid-journey expert. Um, whatever tool that you use, you want to learn more about using the tool. There's all sorts of variables and settings and parameters that you can have that impact what you get. I'm going to show you what I do and keep it simple. Now, one of the things you'll notice here in these images I generated quickly is that there's a lot of variance, right? So you can play around with your style settings in your application. I'm using mid journey. And so uh, initially I had the style settings to the high style. And so it was, you, you get a lot of variance. Um, but then you can see it's like, do I choose this kind of anime style or do I choose something like this or like this, right? So you get almost too much to play around with, but changing your style settings uh, and letting the AI run wild, you get all sorts of options. I went back and just, I have it on raw mode and stylized medium, um, but these were all done at stylized high, very high, I believe. All right, so let's go ahead and create a prompt first. I'm gonna show you how I do this. So I'm just insert a prompt, and prompt is basically just what do you want, right? So it's always an object um, for me. So I have my character. So if we did it this way, we do character, what action, you know, the style. And then I always put, I don't want a background so I can clean it out. Like I don't want something like this where I have to then clean all this stuff out, right? So then I go white background. And that usually works um, pretty well. So that's kind of how I would set the prompt up. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I always just start with businessman and then I'll just say, um, hands on hips and then the style I like to just use vector um, I'm trying to think if I do vector illustration how did what was I styling on there flat vector illustration yeah so I was uh, my brain was leaving me for a second there flat vector illustration and then no no background, so I do white background. And again, anything you type in here is going to change what you what you what you're going to get, right? So I try to keep it simple. There is a bias to this. At this point, we don't worry about like I get a businessman. Why is a businessman white? Why is a businessman not Asian? Whatever it is, right? That's okay. We get the general structure. You can mitigate the bias and how you modify your prompting. So we're gonna go ahead, that's our basic setting. So let's go ahead and do enter and see what we get. Now while, it's, while that's doing that, let's go ahead and change this up a little bit. So I'm going to do another prompt and we'll just go, um, let's do white business. Well, we have a businessman, um, hands on hips. Let's do gesturing, that which is kind of a bit different, right? Because you get your hands on your hip and you're gesturing. Let's see what the prompts give us, right? I like to use the word gesturing because it just gives me different poses. We do enter. We'll get something different. This actually looks pretty good, but you can see I have some distinction in the style. They're not all exactly the same style. Like these two right here could probably go together in a course. You know, maybe these two, the faces are a little bit different, but that's okay. One of the challenges when you when you render these images is, and we can open up a browser and look at that here. Um, one of the challenges is the face, right? Uh, these actually, the faces are actually all intact, um, so they could work. Um, the other challenge is the hands, like this one, Works. There's no hand, no fingers, but it's okay because it works that way. But it's the hands, the faces, and then sometimes you get weird, like you get extra hands or extra, you know, no hands, no body, no, no limbs, <laughs> or you get like a full body pose and no full body pose. So it's really just a matter of playing around with that. But these all actually work pretty well. So I could use any one of these as a, as a starting base, right? Here's the one where I did, you know, hands on hips gesturing and you could see it adds a little bit more flair some drama to that 
Um, let's look at that and see what we have. So you can see these hands are weird. Like, is this the thumb? And then if that's the thumb, you know, what what do you got here? This like looks like this finger is missing. Um, these probably work okay. Yeah, you could work with this, right? It's just it's just what happens. So you kind of have to play around with that. Um, so these all kind of work okay, but you can see by just changing a few things. But I still get that kind of flat vector illustration style that I can I can work with. Once I kind of get something I like, like if I like the hands on hips or or I might do something like, you know, um, uh, we can do presenting. Oops. Let me let me copy this here. Control C. And then we'll do a prompt here. And then let's uh, we can just do talking. And then keep that the same and then see what we get. Or let's change something. We can change the clothes. So we got businessman. Uh, let's do this. We'll go white, or we'll do blue shirt, uh, green jacket, just so it's very. Thing. And then let's see what we get. So we've modified the businessman a little bit, and we've got our action, right? But again, I try to keep it very simple. Don't over over describe it and I think you tend to get better results. So once this is done rendering what we'll do is we'll change up the style. So right now I'm using that kind of low medium style. Uh, we're going to change the style to very stylized and you can see how the AI is just going to give you a completely different approach to how it does that. All right so now when we look at this this is pretty good looking images you can see now I've got a little bit more action to it. I could use these any one of these in a course right now it looks like this person could be talking, presenting, you know showing me something on the screen. Um, so you can see how that works. Um, we changed the colors and you can start to become more specific. like you can notice you know I put green jacket but it a blue blue shirt green jacket and it seems like everything turned green. So this will be great for St. Patrick's Day training, but uh, you'd have to play around with that. So I got a style. Let's say I like that style. Um, then what we're going to do is we're just going to actually, I don't like the green. So let's just go back up to this one we did up here. Um, copy that. And once I have a style I like, or I like, let's, let's change the style settings and then we'll look at modifying the character. So um, this is the flat vector style. If we go into settings and mid journey, um, you can see that I have it stylized low. I want to stylize it very high. And uh, you can see it changed. It gave me a style setting here. And we're going to take that same prompt. Oops. Could you imagine. We're going to take that same prompt. And you're going to see just how dramatically different uh, the character style is going to be. All right, and then here it is. So you can see this is the, which one was this? Hands on hip gesturing. So this was hands on hip gesturing with that flat illustration style with minimum, like that medium style. This is the exact same prompt, but we changed the stylizing and you get something that's much more a photo quality. This looks pretty good, right? And the hands and things. I think it, the more detail it becomes, the better uh, it does with the hands and faces. So you can see by just changing that one thing, you get a completely different looking character set. Now what I don't like about this is you still have all this extra paint watercolor type stuff on there, but that's okay. You know, that's probably be easy enough to clean out. Um, the other thing is you'll notice you have cut off limbs. Uh, a way you can fix that possibly is we're going to take the same prompt and some people may type in like full body pose, all that stuff. I've tried that. It's not always consistent. But if I say businessman, brown shoes, 
it's got to give me shoes. Unless it puts the shoes up on the shoulders or in the ears or somewhere, you're going to get legs with shoes, hopefully. So let's see uh, what that gives us. All right, so now you can see by adding shoes, I've got um, I've got full body poses. But you'll also notice I mentioned the I mentioned brown shoes, and then it also brought brown into the image. So you'd have to play around with this, and maybe you become descriptive, like you know, gray jacket, whatever, and then. Uh, you get more details. But the key thing in this is really keep the prompt simple. So it's your character, maybe some description, like what's the action, like general pose ideas, gesturing always works for me. The flat vector illustration, I like that, keeps it simple, and then white background. And you can change it up, like you could say, instead of different, uh, we'll take the same thing here. And we're going to change the style, right? Because I can change the characters, I can change the style. Um, let's go flat vector illustration. Um, I'm just going to do, just come up with some retro. Uh, or we'll just say vintage poster style. Just see what we come up with. Vintage poster style. Who knows what we're going to get. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and have that run. All right, and you get something that actually kind of looks like some detective uh, book cover from, you know, the, the 1940s or 50s. So you can see there's a lot of really neat things you can do. The main thing is keep the prompts simple from the get-go, like when we talked about initially. It's like character, some action, flat vector illustration, whatever style you want, white background. Once you've gotten that, we're gonna we're just gonna go ahead and take this one here, and I'm gonna copy that. I'm also gonna go back to my settings and go to something that's less dramatic. So I'm just gonna go back to stylized medium, um, and then let's just do that prompt again. All right, so this was the style. This looks good. I like these characters. I can use these. So once I've got a character style, I kind of like this, right? Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and copy this style again and start making modifications. So we'll do imagine. This is where I can put in my character. So maybe instead of a businessman, I want to be more descriptive. So I might say black office manager, right? I don't know what that even means in terms of what that person should like to say black woman, office manager. Um, we'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to do something like this. Let's just do um, a business person. Let's see what we get here. And then let's, we can just change all of this quickly, right? So depending on, um, if depending on what you need specifically, right? You can you can play around with the with descriptions, and once you get something that works for you, then you can kind of stick with that. Let's just do one more. We'll do. Um, this is, this is where it starts to get a little tricky, right? So let's just do, um, we'll do a construction uh, worker, well, inspector, let's do construction inspector. And then I'm going to do PPE and see what we get um, if we get protective equipment. Because I was trying to do something with some hazard training the other day and to see what I get. All right, so let's see what we got here. So you can see I've got my my starting characters. Now I've got this style I kind of like, and you get characters that kind of fit that. They may not be perfect, but once you get enough of these, you can kind of find a style, and then you can say, okay, I'm going to take this character. I like this style, and then this character matches that style, and maybe this character matches that style. So you don't need to use every single thing you get. 
you can always do variation. So, for example, if you like, um, let's say we like this character right here, right? So if you like that character, that's one, two, that's character two. I can create another version based off of character two, so I can create iterations of those characters. Um, so you can see how that works. Um, one of the things you can think about, like sometimes you get a character, maybe you liked this character, but the legs are cut off. That's okay, just plan on using the character and cropping that person. So you could still use that uh, if you want to, but you can see you've got all sorts of different characters. This was interesting because I put Asian and I got both male and female looking characters. And then here's construction. You know, I've got some variation on the construction characters as well. Um, and then you can just build off of off of those. So like you liked version four, you just do version four. And you can see you've got a, a, a few iterations of those characters. And you can kind of just iterate from that until you get what you want. But generally, just keeping it very simple, you get a lot of characters that look similar enough that they're viable and you can use in your courses. In the next tutorial, what I'm going to do is show you how uh, one way to create five simple characters that you can quickly use and then I'll show you how to create multiple characters.